fielding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captain of a scientific technological elite. We signed a climate convention on the importance of economic instruments and free markets were included in this mammoth uh, Agenda 21 document and the Rio Declaration. Now, let me be clear on one fundamental point. Uh, the United States fully intends to be the world's preeminent leader in protecting the global environment. Coming up, Technocracy News. And greetings from Technocracy News and Trends. Patrick Wood here, Editor-in-Chief and Founder of Technocracy News and Trends. And today we're going to discuss Technocracy's final frontier, the takeover of your body. That sounds a little extreme, I realize. And why would somebody want to take over your body like an alien coming from outer space or something? That's not the case here. But technocrats in general that are pushing for technocracy, that is the total social engineering of all of society, they see your body as the final frontier of data collection, and they want to do everything they can to collect more data from you. I wrote in this article, technocrats see your body as a holy grail of data collection that can in turn be weaponized against you to manipulate your behavior, thinking patterns, buying decisions, and life planning. And this is exactly what the object is. The article states that Aram Sinreich recently went grocery shopping at a Whole Foods market in his hometown of Washington, D.C., and realized he had left his wallet at home. He had no cards and no cash, but he had no reason to worry, at least not about paying for his food. I used my iPhone to pay, and I unlocked it with my face, he said. That's when it struck him. We are just one small step away from paying with our bodily features alone. With in-store facial recognition machines, he wouldn't even need his smartphone. Sinreich, Associate Professor of Communication Studies at American University, said he got a glimpse of the future that day. Biometric technology is infiltrating every other aspect of our digital lives. Next stop, replacing your wallet. Biometric mobile wallets that is, payment technologies using our faces, fingerprints, or retinas, already exist. Notable technology companies, including Google, AAPL, of course, and Amazon, AMZN, on the New York Stock Exchange, await a day when a critical mass of consumers is sufficiently comfortable walking into a store and paying for goods without a card or device, according to Sinreich, author of the Essential Guide to Intellectual Property. Removing the last physical barrier, smartphones, watches, smart glasses, and credit cards between our bodies and corporate America is the final frontier in mobile payments. The deeper the tie between the human body and the financial networks, the fewer intimate spaces will be left unconnected to those networks, he said. After a slow start, the global mobile payment market is expected to record a compound annual growth rate of 33%, reaching $457 billion in 2026, according to market research firm IT Intelligence Markets. As payments move from cash to credit cards to smartphones, financial technology companies known as fintechs have been honing their biometric services. And by the way, I have a chapter dedicated to fintech in my book, Technocracy, the hard road to world order. If you want to know more about fintech in general and how it fits into technocracy, that's the place to go. The article continues, biometric technology, meanwhile, is infiltrating every other aspect of our digital lives. Juniper Research forecasts that mobile biometrics will authenticate $2 trillion in in-store and remote mobile payments transactions in 2023. 17 times more than the estimated $124 billion in such transactions last year. Juniper, a UK-based firm that provides research on global high-tech communication sector, 
said it expects growth to be driven both by industry standardization initiatives like Visa's Secure Remote Commerce and by the introduction of smartphone vendors of different forms of biometric authentication. Using biometrics as a method of payment is going to be pretty popular in the future, said Hannah Zimmerman, associate attorney with Fay LLC in Leewood, Kansas. She said this will be propelled by the globalization of commerce and the fact that companies in the U.S. will want to find new ways to facilitate cross-border transactions. This article goes on, and I just strongly recommend that you read it (laughs) cover to cover, so to speak, because your body indeed is the final frontier for social engineers. And these companies are coming at it from every conceivable direction. There will be a time in the future when you simply walk in a store, you're identified, you're all hooked up automatically as a result to the financial system, and anything you decide to do in that store will just be simply recorded and debited, and you'll walk out. They think you walk out with a smile on your face. You might walk out with, a, with an expression of stark fear, like what has happened here, and why do they know everything that I want and everything about me as I walk through the store? Well, like I said, your body is a source of almost unlimited data on you. The next article is a story about data collection as well. In this case, it's a little bit more directly ominous, but the federal government is now demanding certain types of gun owner data from Apple and Google. If you haven't seen this story yet, it'll set your hair on fire almost, at least if you appreciate the Constitution and the Second Amendment. I wrote in this article, technocrats in the administration believe They have some sort of divine right to any data that exists anywhere in the universe and are working backdoors to increase their already massive hoard of citizen data. And they do have a lot of citizen data already, as we know. Massive, ubiquitous surveillance has been taking place in America for a long time. And you wonder, why do they need any more data? Why do they need any more data points, for that matter? But listen to what this article says. Own a rifle? Got a scope to go with it? And by the way, that includes every hunter in America. The U.S. government might soon know who you are, where you live, and how to reach you. That's because the government wants Apple and Google to hand over names, phone numbers, and other identifying data of at least 10,000 users of a single gun scope app Forbes has discovered. That's Forbes magazine. It's an unprecedented move. Never before has a case been disclosed in which American investigators demanded personal data of users of a single app from Apple and Google. And never has an order been made public where the feds have asked Silicon Valley giants for info on so many thousands of people in one go. According to an application for a court order filed by the Department of Justice on September 5, Investigators want information on users of Obsidian 4, a tool used to control rifle scopes made by night vision specialist American Technologies Network Corporation. The app allows gun orders to get a live stream, take video, and calibrate their gun scope from an Android or iPhone device. According to the Google Play page for Obsidian 4, It has more than 10,000 downloads. Apple doesn't provide download numbers, by the way, so it's unclear how many iPhone owners could be swept into this latest government data grab. If the court approves the demand and Apple and Google decide to hand over the information, which I hope they don't, it could include data on thousands of people who have nothing to do with the crimes being investigated. Privacy activists warn, Eden Omanovic, lead on Privacy International's state surveillance program, said it would set a dangerous precedent and scoop up huge amounts of innocent people's personal data. Such orders need to be based on suspicion and be particularized, that is, neither, he said. Neither Apple nor Google has responded to a request for comment at the time of publication. ATN, the scope maker, hasn't responded either. The Immigration and Customs Enforcement, that's ICE department, is seeking information 
as part of a broad investigation into possible breaches of weapons export regulations. It's looking into illegal exports of ATN scope, though the company itself isn't under any investigation, according to the order. As part of that, investigators are looking for a quick way to find out where the app is in use, and that will likely indicate where the hardware has been shipped. ICE has repeatedly intercepted illegal shipments of the scope, which is controlled under the International Traffic and Arms Regulation, as ITAR, according to the government court filing. They included shipments to Canada, the Netherlands, and Hong Kong, where the necessary licenses hadn't been obtained. Well, you should be able to see the dangerous precedent being set here. If the government can spring data from private corporations and mass without any other justification, there's nothing stopping them. They'll be able to extract data on virtually anything they want. In this case, innocent people who have bought ATN Scope are going to have data collected on them, private data, personal data, phone numbers, names, addresses, etc., and they're going to be subject to an investigation they had no part in to begin with. They have absolutely nothing to do with it. This is so blatantly unconstitutional and probably illegal if it were challenged in court that it's just inconceivable. And yet, our government, and in particular, we're looking at ICE here, we're looking at Homeland Security, they have no problem in just shredding the principles contained in the U.S. Constitution and the rights of citizens therein. This is so wrong on multiple levels that it's just indescribable. This needs to stop, and people across America should be ready to rise up against the government and say, you can't have that data. And if you take that data, you will be sued. This is a case that needs to be taken to the Supreme Court probably to get resolution. But believe me, it should be, and soon. The next article that we're going to look at is titled, New Discoveries About Nitrogen Undermine Global Warming. I appreciate this article because with my farming background from my younger life, I understand the importance of nitrogen in the life cycle of growing plants. Nitrogen is essential. It's one of the major gases in the atmosphere, of course. It goes along with CO2 and oxygen. And nitrogen is absolutely essential to growth in plants and green things on the earth at all levels, whether in the ocean or on the ground. And this article points out that there's been some new discoveries about nitrogen. And unfortunately, here's an inconvenient truth. Unfortunately for the global warming crowd, Oh, it shoots a big hole in their whole theory of man-made climate warming. I wrote at the top of this article, climate pseudoscientists have not only misunderstood the carbon cycle of life, but also the nitrogen cycle, which dramatically affects the carbon cycle. New discoveries about nitrogen greatly diminish man's role in climate effects. Now, I can guarantee you that you're not going to see this story appear anywhere in the climate science crowd, nor in mainstream media. This will be an unsupported topic, an unwanted topic, and it will simply just be dropped out of the vernacular. But here's what the article says. Nobody wants to listen to the evidence against global warming because the government doesn't hand out money for research that fails to justify new taxes. Real scientists have just discovered a massive previously unknown source of nitrogen that could turn the global warming nonsense on its head. My bet is that it will be ignored. I agree with him, by the way. There is too much money on the table to just walk away. This new discovery may dramatically change those dire global warming forecasts that are now a religion. I agree with them there, too. The findings were published in the prestigious journal Science, whereby the previous eco-science assumed the only source of nitrogen was the atmosphere. Scientists recently discovered that the planet holds vast storehouses of nitrogen, which is essential for plant life, in its bedrock. This new discovery alters the entire theory behind global warming caused by humans. The University of California at Davis environmental scientist and co-author of the study, Ben Holton, said, quote, This runs counter the centuries-long paradigm that has laid the foundation 
for the environmental sciences, close quote. Now pay very close attention to the word paradigm, which he is using. Clearly, if Holton's discovery of a vast storehouse of nitrogen is correct, then it would have an enormous impact on global warming predictions. Why? Climate scientists have long known that the plants offset some of the effects of climate change by absorbing and storing CO2. But climate scientists assumed that the ability for plants to perform this function was limited because the availability of nitrogen in the atmosphere was limited. A 2003 study published in the same science journal stated, quote, there will not be enough nitrogen available to sustain the high carbon uptake scenarios, close quote. You see, the scientists who have not been on the payroll for global warming understand this is all nonsense. Ronald Amundsen, a soil biochemist at the University of California at Berkeley, publicly told Chemical and Engineering News that, quote, if there's more nitrogen there than expected, then the constraints on plant growth in a high CO2 world may not be as great as we think. Remember high school science class? Remember that with more nitrogen available, then plant life will still grow? And guess what? They absorb more CO2 than climate scientists have been estimating. This means the dire forecast that we have 12 more years to live being championed by AOC and the Democrats are completely inaccurate. The planet won't warm as much with plant life absorbing the CO2 mankind pumps into the atmosphere. Nevertheless, because this field of research is not under global warming grants, we should not expect this information to ever make it to the mainstream media. And I think he's absolutely right on that as well. When plants grow in a crop setting, and it really doesn't matter what the plant is, there must be nitrogen present in the soil in order for photosynthesis to take place and consequently plant growth. If nitrogen is limited, regardless of the other conditions, plant growth will suffer tremendously. So most farmers will add nitrogen via fertilizer to the soil to supplement the soil to allow plants to grow properly. In other settings, farmers will use so-called cover crops like vetch or other legume plants to set nitrogen naturally into the soil. And then the next time they grow another crop that requires more nitrogen, the soil will already have been enriched. This is an important part of agricultural production. So now that an almost unlimited source of nitrogen has been found in the earth, in bedrock, in the ground, deep down in the ground, this completely shoots a big hole in the whole global warming scenario. Plants are absorbing much, much more carbon dioxide than was ever conceived by these climate scientists. And you have to say in the end of it, you just wish these people knew anything about how life works, how the cycle of life chemically works. They just apparently don't know. Well, we can tell them a few things, but since they have turned it into a religion, they're not really open to any criticism whatsoever. They're also not open to any new facts like this. I think it was, I think it was Joe Biden that said something recently like, we'll take truth over facts. That's exactly what you see here in the global warming crowd. Don't confuse us with the facts. We have the truth. We don't need any more facts, especially if it contradicts what we believe is true. Well, I'm Patrick Wood for Technocracy News and Trends. See you next time. Mm -hmm.